Hello and welcome to this video where we'll be introducing the new Glueware Data Explorer. I'm Michael Howe, VP of Product Marketing, and we'll be diving into a few slides to introduce Data Explorer, which is introduced in Glueware 4.1 release. And after a few slides, we're going to jump into a live demonstration of the product. So let's get started. So Data Explorer is a new app as part of the Glueware Control Platform. It brings the ability to surface data from any of the underlying applications in the Glueware databases up to use to provide data insights and really just whatever meaningful data you want to generate out and use outside of Glueware. So it's made up of two primary components. There's the template editor, which enables you to access the, the various fields and build them into the report. Very flexible to create your own custom reports. You can also deem reports as the new default reports accessed in the applications like Device Manager, Config Drift and Audit, OS Manager, and Config Modeling. You also, uh, the second main piece of it is the real-time report viewer. So as you generate your template, you're able to select devices and run the report, and then actually look at that data and, and decide if it is uh, you know, manipulated and, and designed the way you want it to in the real-time viewer then you can then integrate it into the product further by either setting it to generate on de uh, generating it on demand and using those results or scheduling those results and having them email out to you periodically in CSV or PDF or JSON format. So we put together this image to help kind of visualize what is available now with the new Data Explorer app. So let's start with you know, traditionally when you use Glueware, you would navigate into an application like Device Manager or Config Drift and Audit. You would perform an inventory or a drift or an audit, and then you would have your results and Device Manager would, the underlying Device Explorer would populate with all the results that occur. And from Device Explorer in each app, you can export out your default report. In that default report, it's a set of fixed columns and, and rows that are, are generated out and available to you. We refer to that as the default report. So Glueware provided data that was very app oriented depending on what part of the platform you're using. Well, in this new process or new way to use or get to the data, you can navigate into Data Explorer directly and then either by choosing a pre-built report or uh, navigating into the template editor and creating your own report or user-defined report, you can define the fields exactly how you would want to see. So for example, maybe you want information directly from device manager fields like the host name and the discovered serial number and uh, the operating system version. And then maybe you also want what the drift status is and maybe you want to know if an operating system upgrade passed or failed all in one report. So that type of mixed data report wasn't really available directly before, and now you can surface any kind of data you want in a user-defined report. The other component of that is referring back to the applications and the fact they have default reports. Using Data Explorer, you can build out a report that has the fields that you want to see from a specific app. So instead of getting the default report I get in Device Manager, I can fully customize a report using my template editor and then deem that as the default report for when I generate reports out as Device Manager. So it's very useful in terms of customizing and seeing exactly the data you want to see. The other aspect of that is once a template is created, from any of the apps, when you generate reports, you can obviously generate the default report, but you also have access to the other templates that are created and available. So that library is available to you, not just from Device Explorer. Once they're created, they're available from the other apps as well. So just the, the kind of three main category are user-defined reports. Those user-defined reports you can then deem as custom default reports. And then there are dozens of example reports that Glueware is creating and making available on the knowledge base. So these include things like hardware inventory, port state reports, port utilization, layer two and layer three configuration, and more. And we're gonna get into several of those examples shortly. 
One of the most exciting and powerful components of the new Data Explorer is the fact that in the 4.1 release, we've expanded the device detect to expand the amount of information we're discovering and storing into the database. So when you think of Glueware, when you execute a device discovery, we're interrogating that device, doing a list of CLI commands and extracting that information out, pulling it into our database. Generally, this has been platform specific information. Now we're ex we've expanded discovery to capture port information, layer two information and layer three information. So things like the port name and the type and the slot and the media state and even the operational state as well as the, the MAC address and the VLAN ID and IP address and much more. So this expansion of data really provides meaningful data that is available for you in new reports. We're gonna get into some of that, but examples are, you know, you can have hardware inventories that really go in much more detail about uh, port uh, level information. We have the ability to look at port utilization. So looking at if a port is up or down and if it's available or not, looking at your address assignment, like what VLANs have been assigned in your network or what IP addressing and what masks and what VRFs and more. So this additional discovered data provides a lot of value in the category and capability in the reporting available to you in Data Explorer. So I've mentioned a few of these already, but let's just jump through a couple use cases here. One of the most common and popular is that Glueware through device discovery is interrogating the hardware. For Cisco, we actually go down to line cards and modules and pull serial numbers and can capture a very, very detailed hardware inventory. And that can all be generated out in a report. So very, very useful. And this is a porting of where this data export was only available before in the utility data export, which had a fixed report. Now, that whole functionality is available in Data Explorer and you have full capability to customize the report that you want to extract out relating to the hardware inventory. In use case number two, this is a new one that's enabled by the advanced discovery, which is looking at port statuses of if it's up or down, if it's like an, again, up and in use or an admin down, potentially not in use and be able to generate a usage report. So very useful for capacity planning and understanding the availability you have to expand in you know, campus switches or data centers or things like that. In use case number three, this is about looking at resource assignments like IP addressing and VLAN assignments and being able to generate out a report of the IP addresses used in your environment or the VLAN IDs used. And you can execute this out into databases and in, in sync or correlate with things like IPAMs or other ways in which you're managing resources like addressing. One of my favorite use cases is the combo report. So this is where you kind of had separated data depending on what app you're in. But ultimately, when you're operating a, a network and you're looking at the full lifecycle management, you want to understand information about the platform on a in a daily report and through a scheduled report, I may want to understand if drift occurred and if an audit passed or failed. Also, if any operating system upgrades were executing, did they pass or fail? So I may want a daily activity kind of log of what happened and a combo report can be very useful for this. You can also include information about provisioning, which is config modeling where you're implementing changes and what changes got implemented down to the network and if there were any issues or failures with that. In use case number five, this is another example that's ported over from Data Explorer, sorry, Data Export, where we have the ability to export out Cisco licenses that are enabled and used on platforms. And now this functionality is exposed and available in Data Explorer as well. So looking at, again, the, the Cisco licenses at, in your equipment. So we're gonna take a, bunch, a look at a bunch of these in the app. So let's move on to the live demo. Okay, so here we are in the Glueware live demo here with uh, Glueware 4.1. So I'm gonna get signed into my Glueware instance here. And what you're gonna, one of the things you're gonna notice first is uh, when you're using 4.1 is our left-hand nav menu. So with the left-hand nav menu, before we jump into Data Explorer, I'm gonna start in Device Manager quickly here just to set a, a little bit of basis about how and when the information is collected. So 
For those of you not as familiar, when you add in devices and or perform a network discovery, Gluware executes a device discovery. So I'm going to double click on the Cisco 3650 switch, which we're going to use a lot in this demo because it's uh, for my demo lab, it's one of the few actual real physical devices that I have. I'm going to look at the log and, and double click on the discovery because what I want you to see is when Glueware is executing a device discovery, it's, it's interrogating the device to capture a lot of information. And all of this is how we're populating our database. So we're ingesting the CLI data. We're, we're processing it and then we're storing it as a data model, happens to be in JSON based format. But we're looking at things like show version and show hardware. And let's see, look, there's expanding here, show inventory. And what you're going to see is a bunch of new things. If you have been using Glueware, this uh, show module is getting into what we're capturing for the detailed hardware inventory. Now look at show switch, looking at the state of the switch. Show licensing. Again, this is how we can capture the licensing information. So we'll be referring to this in a little bit later where we're seeing the, the LAN base license is in use and enabled and, and even more. So this is where we're looking at show interface and actually pulling out things about interface configuration and interface state. So historically from Device Explorer, you would just come and export your, you would export your data. When you, when you export or run the report, historically you would just run the default report. Now when you run report, you can select other templates that are available and now you can have a default, a new default report for each app like Device Manager here. So let's jump into Data Explorer on the left hand nav menu. I can navigate directly into the app or with the menu now, I can navigate directly into devices or the template library. So I'm going to navigate directly into the template library. And one of the things you're going to see in my instance here is that I, I do have a bunch of templates that I have imported or created. And so one of the probably first questions in your mind is, can I import and export templates? And absolutely you can. So uh, a number of these already at least a dozen or so are have been created to share from Glueware. So you have access to these from the Glueware knowledge base. So you, you just click import and then you drag and drop the JSON based template in and you're off and running. So that's what I've done with most of these. So let's take a look at uh, a template and look at how it can help generate the data I'm looking for. So as I look at the, the names of these templates, don't want to do that. Just want to move this over. As I look at the Cisco extended inventory, another inventory example, Cisco PCERT data, support data, uh, drift and audit inventory with components. So you can, you can see the different examples I can run here. So let's take a look at Cisco extended inventory. As I double click that report, I see all of the fields that are being generated into this report. So name, description, management state, IP address, vendor, host name, operating system, operating system version, serial number, and SKU. So pretty standard information that you may want to capture. The way you would manipulate this data is you just click on add row and you have all the categories in the database to add into this report. So one of the cool and exciting categories we're going to be getting into a little bit later is the discovered information so chassis level information component level element level getting into your layer two and layer three port layer and and on and on so as we get be as we get beyond the discovered information then you're going to see things like drift and audit so this is right out of the drift and audit app uh, general uh, components that you can expand here around this is a lot of Glueware related information. When was something created? What was the last activity? What's the management state? And so on and so forth. So general is kind of more Glueware type properties. The, the node properties, which uh, again, you can look at here, but this is largely around what's happening in config modeling on what's the policy, what are the configuration summary, what features were provisioned and on. So the node, node properties are out of config modeling OSM is OS manager reboot has the device been rebooted and uh, what were it, what what is its status support data syslog 
and on and on. So this is where you can see kind of browse the data available to you. And the search is very handy because if I wanted the IP address, I could search for it in this box, find it, and then populate it in. If I, I believe this report already had the device IP as a field. So just getting back to a few of the basics up on top, you name it. I think it's very handy to add a description. And then you have the option of orientating the report to be column-based or row-based. Generally, if you don't specify this, the row will be each device. So you'll have a unique device on each line, and then all the data will be column-oriented. Where it makes sense to do row orientation is, let's say you want a device, but then you want a row per, let's say, port or a row per license or some, some other corresponding thing where you can have a lot of elements tied to one physical device. And we'll look at examples like the layer two port status is a good example of, you'll see all the ports associated you know, by row under one particular switch. So we'll look at that. In the intro, I talked about the fact that I could deem a report the default for the applications like Device Manager, Drift and Audit, or OS Manager. That's where you would indicate that with these checkboxes. You also have the ability to share within your org. So if this is private, when I navigate in or others are, it's a, you know, Gluware is a multi-user system. If it's private, others won't see this. If I make it public, others can see it, and I can even make it available into sub-organizations. So Gluware is hierarchical and the way that you can create your organizations and you can make those available. As well, as I mentioned, you can export if, let's say I create this as a private report, I can export it out and save it as a JSON file and someone else, I could share it and someone else could import it in. So that would be a way of sharing. So now that we've gone over some of those basics, let's go ahead and get a report running here. So what we do is switch over to the device view and you, here's where you'd select one or more devices. And it's also very handy that you have filtering and sorting. So let's just say I wanted to search for Cisco. I just type Cisco and you know all the relative Cisco devices are here. So as you're looking at you know how do I select my set of devices, this is where the grid functionality is gonna come very handy. Again, you can just type, type in here or, or delete this. You can use regex. You can apply a filter and look for something very specific. So all of those things, again, covered in other tutorials, but I did want to you know, use this example where I will filter on Cisco, and I'm going to use this 3650 as a real hardware device, and I'm going to say run a report, and the report is going to be the Cisco Extended Inventory Device List, and hit run. It runs quickly because we're not interrogating the device again. It is... Um, it is pulling from the database. So that's one key benefit here is that you're not having to re-query the network all the time. If you want to refresh the data, you can go to any of the apps like Device Manager or Drift and Audit. Anything that's essentially touching the device will update all of the fields. But basically, you know, when you pull it from the report, you are pulling it from the database of the last stored data. So this report isn't super exciting because it's a one-liner. However, if I look across here, Look at all the information collected, serial number and SKU. And as I scroll over here, uh, information about operational state, like high availability, and if it's disruptive, if it's licensed, and getting into end of life, end of sales included. Uh, P certs, this one has no criticals, which is good. As I scroll over, you have your the, the SKUs for the power supplies and even component level information. So this type of detail is very, very useful when you're trying to inventory your network and find out exactly what's there in a lot of detail. So a, a good quick example. So let's go back to, let's switch back over to the, the template uh, library. And let's look at um, something kind of a little, little simpler, a little more straightforward, the Cisco P-Cert summary. So if I double click on that, I'm going to see a relatively short report, which is just name, description, IP, SKU, operating system. And then we are pulling the critical advisories, high advisories, and meeting advisories. And this is done through API integration with Cisco. But instead of like trying to list out all the advisories, 
we're actually summing the, it's a calculation is being performed to give me a total. So this is where, again, let's say I'm in operations, uh, a regular task for me might, might be a security audit in some fashion. And if I know that, you know, the devices I have out there have zero criticals, well, if it turns from zero to one or to five, maybe now I need to pay attention. So this type of report is super handy to generate on a regular basis. So here, uh, let's go ahead. Now that we've looked at this report, let's go ahead and run it. So let me jump back to my, my device list here and I'll just select all the Cisco devices. Now, what's gonna happen is only the Cisco devices supported by the Cisco API will resolve data. So that's one thing to point out. So some, some of them might not have data associated with them, but let's go ahead and, and run the report. The report I wanna run is the Cisco P-Cert summary and hit run. Again, you can see I can schedule it. And I can, I, back to here, this is also quite useful is that I selected specific devices. However, you can, you can have a filter, and if you use a filter, it's useful when, you're at, when devices are being added and removed in your network. So if I create a filter to filter on Cisco, that filter will always apply, or I could, spe I could filter on a sp specific type of like Cisco switch or whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and run this report again. And again, what you're seeing here is I'm actively running and looking at the report in the report viewer, the, the data explorer is res, the results here. And um, I can see the data here, my 36 Swift 50. Again, these others are virtual. So while there are advisories, because it's based on the operating system version, they could be actionable, but it, you're, it's generally more something you're paying attention to a little bit more on your hardware series products. And I can, I can see again here, there's no critical. So if I, if I was running CSRs in production, and, and a critical popped up, this would be something I would be concerned with. So I can navigate back over to Device Manager and see exactly what that piece is all about. So again, quite useful in it that it's giving me a sum and it's giving me the, the data here. This is the PCERT report. Let's jump back to my uh, template view. Again, just wanna cover a couple of use cases so you can get familiar with what this is doing here. So. Let's jump into some of the new content that's available now. And I think this layer two port state uh, report is pretty cool because what, I, what I've done in this report was I just went, if you look at discovered data and you look at your layer two ports, basically I, I dumped all of this, all of these fields into a report. In addition, I put the device name. So you could put information about the device, but then you're gonna want, so if you look it up here, from general, I have the name. And then everything else, and then from discovered, I put the host name. And then everything else here is discovered information that um, I have. So, and again, look at, look, I, I, since I hit add row, this, this one showed up here. I'll just delete that off and that confirm. I don't need that last one there. So let's go ahead and run this. And again, I'll, I'll navigate over to my device view. My 3650 is a real switch, so let's go ahead and run the layer to port state and hit run. And discard. Okay, so, you know, this is generating out a report for one switch, but if I had a dozen switches or a hundred switches in a campus or a data center, I would traditionally have to be having to go and execute this command and then look at the CLI and then somehow, you know, extract that data out. When I'm trying to run reports or even archive data or, you know, take a snapshot of where I'm at or assess, you know, how many ports are available or in use, it would have been pretty painful. Now you can just generate it right out into a, a report. I can see all of the, this is a, a 24 ports of gig E here on this switch. And then there's a, an additional four port module here. So I can see here, and as I scroll across, what, is, what VLANs are assigned, what, what VLAN name, 
what operational state. So let's just say, you know, I expected NAC to be on every port. You know, I, I could flag or that could be a security related thing. And then you get into some operational things like speed and duplex and MTU. And, you know, if my policy is to hard code speed and duplex and it's sitting in auto, that could be a red flag for me. Or if I see an MTU mismatch where something is not using the default or 1500, that could be a concern for me as well. So again, these reports provide a lot of data to process for network operations. And the goal is to get it involved in your automated processes. So sometimes you're generating these reports ad hoc, kind of looking at some things and maybe it's helping with troubleshooting or assessing. But more often, I think it's gonna be the case where you have certain regular activities that you do besides working tickets and, and working change issues and that you want, you, you need to perform a capacity planning activity or you need to perform a security assessment or maybe you're acquiring a new company and you need to figure out how their network is configured and what's running and you're doing an assessment. These types of reports and, and capabilities are super useful in all of those areas. So let's, let's take a look at one more report here. Just navigate back to my, my template browser. We'll just take a we'll take a look at two more. The layer three port report. I find this one good for when I'm even in for me in a relatively these devices are networked together for various demos. And so I want to understand how the IP addresses are configured. Let's just say I'm trying to very quickly troubleshoot what's happening. Instead of going device by device, I'll just generate a layer three port state, hit run. and I get my results. So what I can see is each of these devices have a gigabit ethernet one up and configured, and I can see the addressing scheme here, and I can see the mask, and you know I can scroll over, and, and then understand some of the operational things too, like the MAC or the, uh, the, the MTU, and if the, what the port state is. So these are virtual CSRs. You can add additional virtual interfaces and tie them to things, but Again, just a demonstration of a quick assessment when you're trying to look at IP addressing or maybe spot an issue with an incorrect subnet mask or MTU or something like that. We'll take a look at one last one because uh, in one of my reports, I was playing around a little bit with something we exposed around conditionals. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this report, this, sorry, this particular template. It was called Mike's First Template. You know, it was the very first time I'm playing around it. And use case came up where you may want to check for a specific operating system version that you expect in the network. So, um, and with that check, I want to apply a uh, conditional formatting. So what we're gonna see here is we're pulling the name, the SKU and the OS version. If I click on edit, if it equals 16.12.1a, it's green. And then inherent or implied, anything that's not 16.12.1a would not be green. Therefore, could be something of concern if that's what I was trying to very quickly visually assess. So again, if I just take this simple report here, I navigate to my devices, I'm gonna grab this same set of routers here and apply what's called Mike's first template and hit run. I see my results here and the, the SKU is, there's a conditional on that. It's green as expected. They're all CSR 1000 Vs. My CSR 1000 Vs are 16.12.1a, all good. Okay, so again, a, a form or a version of a, a quick report that you can then use for assessment. Let's run one last report here because I did forget about one I wanted to highlight. So let's navigate back to the reports. And this is around capacity planning and understanding you know, like port utilization. So let's look at the port summary report, which gives you my layer two and layer three free and used port totals. So let's navigate back. And this time for the heck of it, we'll, we'll, we'll just select all the devices here we're going to execute a report, which is the port summary, and hit run. 
And what it's going to highlight for me, it's going to look at these devices, the ports free, the ports used, the total ports, and then it's going to do the calculations for me. It's going to give me my percentage ports used, percentage ports free, totals, and this type of assessment, again, can just be very useful for things like capacity planning or understanding, you know, when I might be at an area of concern. And so clearly this report, I didn't build this one. This was one provided for me as a, a reference report, which will be available in the Gluer knowledge base for the download and use. But basically there's conditionals on when you're above a certain amount, it changes color to red, obviously, because these are 100% used. Therefore, there's no availability, right? So if I was looking at a capacity planning exercise and, you know, these happen to be virtual. So again, we could add ports, but this one's a real switch. That's 70%, 73% used. I may have to upgrade that if I was adding more servers or adding something in my network. So that's a, a quick highlight of a number of use cases around using Data Explorer and um, how it does integrate in with all of the apps. I, I, what I didn't get to show you, and of course there's always more, is that you can generate out reports for your drift and audits, for your OS upgrades, and for your configuration information, like this node provisioning summary, which tells you what nodes got provisioned, what features, what assemblies, and what the results were. So with that, we'll conclude this demonstration and we want to thank you for your time and interest in Glueware. For more information, check out Glueware.com. Reach out to us by requesting a demo or email us at sales at Glueware.com. From Glueware.com, you can request a free trial or take our test drive and try the application for yourself. Thanks again for your time and interest in Glueware.